Okay, welcome, 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 Elizabeth, Elizabeth. All right, so everyone, you know me. Elizabeth Wilson, I met her at a Young Living convention and picture this. You're in like a space that has 30,000 people, everyone on a mission. They're going to their next workshop. They're trying to take notes. They're trying to grab something to eat. They're going here. They got to go to the bathroom. Everything is like this. And then in the midst of it all, sitting in the middle of this walkway is a little family with two young children. And it's like they are oblivious to the rest of the world. They are in their own little space, just enjoying the moment and the time together. And I am so glad, first of all, that I saw it. And then secondly, that I actually stepped up to you and commented of what a beautiful scene that was. And little did I know that that scene represents how you live your life in this moment, make the most of it, move forward, stay calm, relax. Yeah, that, that will sum mm. that up, right? Oh my gosh, it's so lovely to hear your story about that. <laughs> oh. And what a lovely perspective, you know, yeah, yes. Yes, you're right. It, it, that is how I live my life. That is how, my, that it's a lifestyle that I cultivate actually. And it's my top priority. And it gives me a, an experience of grace in life. It gives me an experience of sovereign poise. And that makes a lot of space for family connection and for deepening love and for clarity of mind and for hopefulness of thought and for right action and encouraged to take opportunity. So, you know, I, I don't mean to, <laughs> I don't mean to, 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 to boast on my life, but I will say that, that that is something I've gotten really good at is, is having the kind of life where I can stay in the middle of <laughs> that crazy chaos that the, the wonderful Young Living Convention um, was in the olden days before, before the new way of being. But that, um, um, that's super cool to hear your perspective of seeing it from the outside. That's wicked. Thank you for being a witness. <laughs> I was a witness and it was very precious. So everyone, um, I did a series called Empowerment 111 and Elizabeth told her empowerment story there and it, it, it will blow your mind, just saying this. You're like, what? You lived in what? Under what circumstances? And you're just continually joyous and grateful, like gratitude. That's, that's who you are. So speaking of gratitude, there is a hashtag that's going around right now, hashtag YIYL. So why do you young living? And I would love to hear what, where your passion comes from for young living. Oh my word. Well, I, I said this to you just before we turn the camera on. This is just such an incredibly deep and broad and wide and huge subject. Why I, why L, that, um, that there are so many dimensions to it. You know, a part of the question or part of the answer is, how did it come to be? that I YL. And that's my empowerment story that I shared with you before. Um, and, and the reasons why something comes to us and presents itself to us in life at the right, in the right way at the right time, providing the solution that you need to solve an unsolvable problem. When these sorts of things arrive in your life, you recognize them, you recognize them as truth. So, I have to admit, I didn't come to Young Living through extensive research. I didn't compare many, many, many different brands. I didn't do all of that, all of the brainy, clever, researchy stuff. I found it or it found me right when I needed it. So that's why it came to be. And um, it, it, in fact, Young Living was there for our innermost struggles and all of our circumstantial struggles, you know, Young Living provided uh, a stream of income when we were living in a derelict barn with absolutely nothing, you know, so kind of saved our life in that way. 
it provided an energetic space when we were faced with absolutely no solutions and our life had been completely destroyed to the point where there was nothing left except the love that the four of us had for each other. And one electric cord through the window of the barn to power the fairy lights and the diffuser. And that diffuser had, was, was providing an environment of smell, of vibration, that kept us in a psychonumosomatic state. That's my state of being, right? That kept us in a state of being where we could access hope. We could access possibility. We, had, we could find the courage to say yes when the opportunity came, the opportunity that happened to bring us out of that situation and into the next. And we were able to be present for those things because we had this environment that we were living in. Your environment isn't just, you know, what, how good is your house? What walls do you live in? Do you have the latest security system and all that kind of stuff? Your environment is your immediate visceral vibrational experience. And what we discovered was that you can live in perfect sovereign peace, acceptance, allowing and love whether whether you're in a barn or whether you're in a tent we lived in a tent at one point as a little tiny homeless family um and we had our essential oils there so we were always able to access just that a place of of mental peace of emotional peace and tranquility and that meant we were always able to see the next thing we needed to see to get ourselves into the next state of being i guess you could say or, or chapter of life so that's how it came to be right um, and it's kind of hard to ignore. So, like I said, sometimes in life, something just you you have to recognize it for what it is. And you, now, you, you, I'm going to interrupt you there because yes. I'm going to say most people, if they are living in a derelict barn, because you talk about the walls around you, I believe you said there was like gaps in the boards. And in that space, you were of the mindset I'm going to power a diffuser. I'm like, what? Because you're in that space of being open and gratitude and uh, ready for the next possibilities. A lot of people would just crumble in that state, let alone have the wherewithal to, I'm going to plug in my diffuser because mm -hmm. these oils will in, infuse in me and keep me on that forward thing. So. Mm -hmm. You can spin your story however you want, but I'm doing this. Like, uh, kudos to you. Well, put it, put it this way, right? I had the oils already, which means that I was already in the oily mindset. So when these terrible circumstances came to be, I didn't have to pull myself up to think I'll put the diffuser in because I was already knowing that that was, that was possible for me. So that's that's one of the best things about the young living lifestyle, I think, is that it keeps a sort of sense of buoyancy so that all kinds of stuff can go on in life. But you've got your tools right there. It's the ease. In fact, right now, just before we came on, I thought to myself, I want to make sure I'm properly nourished. So I grabbed my pack of Ningxia. It's so easy, you know, so if product endorsement moments but it but you know what i'm saying so when you you find yourself in a derelict barn it, it's not a stretch to reach for your diffuser because it's already a part of the way you do life right yeah so that would be product endorsement number 2 my essential times <laughs> 4 is never far away <laughs> it's part of the lifestyle right yeah, exactly. it just becomes the same as breathing getting up in the morning having a glass of water yeah, you do the, the, the yoga. It's you know what what do you do in your life to to make sure that you have access to that sovereignty, to make sure that you can find peace. What do you do? Have you got a practice? Have a practice, and you know some people do the yoga. Some people go to church every Sunday. Some people you know dance naked around the fire on the beach. It's good. Have a practice to bring you back to center, and we don't need to squabble about what it is. Now, Young Living fits into all of that. It fits into your yoga practice. It fits into your church lifestyle. It fits into your rituals in the woods. And, uh, and it fits into, a, fits into the day so easily, you know. 
fits into business. I use it for my business. I use it for my practice as well. So it's, it's, that's what's so great about Young Living, the Young Living lifestyle is that it's, it, it doesn't replace anything. It just seamlessly infuses into it. You know what I'm saying? So you, you're in a derelict barn and there's the diffuser. And what's it, what, what's it diffusing? It's diffusing abundance and gratitude. <laughs> that's what it's diffusing. So I, I know a lot of people, they have a little panic or fear, I guess, of, of oh, I'm going to have to change my life to, you know, get toxins out and, and start using Young Living products. And it's, it, it's no, this is your life. How does that fit into your life? You're not changing anything. You're supplementing it. And the other thing that I picked up from your conversation, and it just, just like hit me. What are you going to do today to be in that mindset? I, I talk empowerment. You talk, oh, what's your phrase that you use? Sovereignty. What are you going to do today to be in that space? Because when you're in that space, it doesn't matter what happens. Mm. I've just, I've read two books about Auschwitz. And this one gentleman he, telling his story and regardless of what the circumstances, and you know, they were pretty bad circumstances. Mm. He never lost his sense of humanity that he was going to be there to help people regardless of what he was going through. And wow. starting your day, what am I going to do today that I stay in that space and not give yeah. up that power? Yeah. You're such a wise woman, Miss Elizabeth. Oh, <laughs> well, here's, here's the thing, you know, wisdom, wisdom is something that comes from within, right? It's something that's already there and it's natural to everyone. And when we're not squabbling or worrying or fixing or concerned about everything that's going on on the outside, all of the circumstantial stuff, what's left is wisdom. That's just what is naturally coming coming through you coming through all of us at any given time and I think a part of our journey a part of the human journey is finding that finding a practice finding a way to align with that you know to align with that what is natural what is your natural wisdom and love and what comes through you and and that's the second part of your question also is it's what is coming through you that's that's your devotion that's your passion. That's what's wanting to be your imprint on the world. That's your natural alignment. You know, that's your purpose and your place in, in the world. That's what makes everything worth it. You know, and that's also what gives so much clarity to us when, once, we've, once we can sort of find that devotion and we can start to imprint ourselves on the world in an authentic way, then it becomes about something greater than us. And that, oh my gosh, it helps us to overcome all these silly little personal traumas and things that we feel like we need to heal and fix so we can become the perfect person so that we can then contribute. But to instead go directly into alignment with that natural unfolding and, and pour love into the world in front of you and to be of service. And again, again, Young Living provides a way of doing that. It provides a way of doing that both because it brings you more into who you really are. And I believe that that's our service. I believe that our, our true essence is our service to the world. That's core to my life philosophy. Um, and, and young living helps me stay in a mind space and in a physical space so that I can be that. So I can be the best version of myself. But also all of the money that I spend on my oils and my supplements and my products, all of that goes into... I mean, all of those, what is the percentage that go, you know, Debbie, what is the percentage that goes out of the, we don't know exactly what the percentage is, but every single dollar that I put into my Young Living provides an input into the Young Living Foundation, which does incredible work all over the world with, for really good causes. And it's an easy way for me to be a part of that. It's an easy way for me to participate in something that's bigger than me that frankly is, is bigger than, than, than I can conceive of even. And I get to still be a little, a little part of that. So in many ways, Young Living is helping me to be of service and to, and to, and to, to truly be a, a piece of the, a bigger design, you know, something 
mystical and magical. That was really exemplified at Christmas. So for the holiday catalog that they had, they reached out to women who had been in pretty horrific, disempowered, abusive situations, and yet they were turning their life around and trying to have a, a small business so that they could take care of their family. And Young Living connected with them and made their products for sale for uh, to us, right? So I'm like, I want those earrings. I want that necklace. I want those little pieces, those trees that are cut from, like, I want all these things because I get to, you know, through my purchase, make that little bit of difference that has a massive impact on yeah. this woman's life and then how she empowers her family and her friends and other women. It's just extraordinary. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's stuff like that. It's stuff like that, providing opportunities and little talismans and little symbols that, that give delight, that give us little droplets of delight. Um, and, and at the same time, uplifts so many different people in so many different ways. And not to mention the, the, the building of infrastructure projects, you know, enormous en uh, feats of engineering that can only be done when you have big resources. You know, uh, Debbie, one of the things that um, I wrestle with a little bit, and I know a lot of people that are conscious and loving wrestle with, is shouldn't I put my money into a small essential oil company? Some, a good woman who has, who has a little distillery and who, who wants to make, you know, lovely medicines and potions for the world. Shouldn't I put my money there instead and support small businesses? Um, and I wrestle with that. And, that. and that is a really valid question. You know, we, we need to ask these questions about how, what is good, sustainable, mindful um, uh, business? How, what is enterprise and industry? You know, and I think about that a lot. That we need small businesses and we need small innovators and we need giants. We need the giants who can carry a huge weight. We need billion dollar businesses that have the resources to change countries, not just individual people. We have to do that too. We have to be on the, on the ground helping this small person and this small person and this small person. And we're all disciples in that way. We all have a role to play in that. And the billion dollar businesses, they have to pull their part. They've got to contribute to massive global change. And, and we need people like Young Living. I mean, we need bodies, entities like, like Young Living to be able to pull that kind of massive change that we need. Yeah. And for me, one of my whys is the ethics and the standards that Young Living, Gary Young, and then it's went into the Young Living, the company, the standards and the ethics to, you see a problem, find a solution, be the solution, make it happen. That, that's Gary Young. That's how I see him and never compromising on a core value. Mm. And there are many times in the past six years where I've been, yeah, and then my brain will go, but that's not a young living way, is it? And I went, oh, okay, I have mm. to be my best. It mm. has just upped my standard for me and my personal life because of who they are and what they represent. Yeah. The other piece that you're talking, because this is a phrase I say all the time, it's not either or, it's the and. And how do we get to the and where we're supporting the and? There's so much conflict because people are stuck in either or and they're mm. not moving into that space where it's holistic yeah. and it's yeah. one world, one people and supporting each other and but living up to those standards. And as you said, contributing to the, the giants who can truly make a difference even in the role of setting standards for other big businesses. Like, cause I'm not choosing you guys because I know what you can be like. You can be like Young Living if you chose to. So yeah. my expectations have changed for big corporations. Because yeah. Of that. yeah, exactly so. You know what I love about um, um, the network marketing model and you can say what you like about network marketing and MLMs. It, I, it's not an opinion. This is a this is a fact, which is that you can have then a, you can have the and 
You can have the billion dollar giant and you can have a, a cute little woman in the woods who is using her Young Living products to create amazing solutions for the people she serves. Um, and, and that's, I think that's super, super cool. So you know, say what you want, but I think that is absolutely lovely. Now, one of my dearest friends from, from college, she made her first million this year in an MLM. Wow. By being a little person on the ground, representing something that she believes in. And sure, the company she represents is a billion dollar giant, but she's a little woman who smashed a personal goal and who got to realize something for herself and for her family that otherwise, I don't know, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a jungle out there, Debbie. I don't know if you've noticed. There's really, <laughs> I, I have noticed. <laughs> so I'm in the retirement stage. So retirement as it was, was this and mm. retirement with Young Living is this and the opportunity with Young Living retired is this. So yeah. I, I get it, like the door is opening and the, could I have gone and stayed working in the nine to five and done this to this to this? Mm, maybe this. Yeah. But I doubt if I would get here. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. you could, you could, but would you be doing it with a, with a network of family of supporters? Would you be doing it with mentors and with resources and with all of that love and encouragement? It's, it's hard to conceive, you know, and this is, a, this is, it's working. It's working in Young Living right now. It's doing great. You know what? You said something lovely, which I think um, I want to just reflect on that when you said, I, I know what you can be like. You can be like Young Living and Young Living sets, um, it sets a standard. It sets a, a way of being. It shows us a way of being, a way of being in integrity, a way of being in truth, a way of considering excellence and quality values to look up to. You know, it, 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 that, excuse me, but in the spiritual industry right now, there's a lot of, don't worry, you're good enough. And that's true, you are good enough, but you can also excel. You can also be awesome. You can, you can focus on your mastery. You can really broaden your, your standards. You can reach high new things um, and also be good enough. Um, and one of the, that, that frightens a lot of people, right? Because they're like, man, I am so far from perfection. I am a smashed up, broken, washed up soul. <laughs> I've still got bruises on my heart. You know, I am not ready for, for, for that kind of level of, of standard of perfection. And here's what I think Young Living does really well. It demonstrates that it's okay to be broken. I mean, just this year, Mary wrote the most beautiful letter to the all members and said, oh my word, we've been a bit broken. And ouch, you know, we've got bruises on our hearts because we've messed up but I know we can do better. I know that we can strive. I know what our essence is. I know what my soul is. I know what's truth. I know what I value and I know what I'm capable of. And I love you and I believe in you and thank you for supporting us. And, and let's go, let's do this. And that is an example of what every human needs to be able to do on their journey because you're never gonna be perfect. You know, we're always gonna have to to take that step and eat some humble pie and, and, and try again, you know? And I think it's just great to be in an environment where, where that quality, that space is safe and, and exemplified by our leaders. Yeah, yeah. I used to do a um, program for staff called Tweaking Your Awesomeness. So wherever you are right now is your highest potential until the next moment oh that's your highest potential right and you just keep tweaking it and tweaking it and and not kicking yourself for where you were or where you are just embracing and i go back to you here i am in a broken down farm or a barn in the, like what and you're like it's okay because it's going to be okay and i'm grateful for what i have and i 
yeah, in this space. And you're right, Young Living is just the role model to us for that. This is where we are. What can we do? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? It is and, so and lovely. To have, the, to have the things like the Young Living Foundation woven into that self-reflection, like this is where we are and what can we do? And we know that we're going to make service integral to what we do. You know, I, it, it, when you put it all together like that, it, it, it just, oh, I fall in love. I just fall in love with, with the honesty and with the truth. You know what hit me, like really like touched my heart. When I was, um, when I was first moving into Young Living, um, we were living in, we were, we were about to move into the barn. We hadn't yet. We knew we were going to be homeless. We didn't know what the solution was, but we had this like rusty old RV with some bullet holes and some rat's nests and stuff. And, and I left my husband to try and turn that into something livable. And I hitched like to Utah to go to the Young Living Convention and learn how, learn how to live with essential oils, learn what this was all about. Um, and, um, now I completely lost my thread because now I'm thinking about the the moment that I was sitting on the the steps at the at the Young Living Convention and my husband called me up. This is a three days after or three days I've been into the Young Living Convention. He calls me up and he says, "Game over. There's nothing we can do. The RV is not livable. It's it, it's the end. We've got to put this project down." That moment, I saw a number of royal crown diamonds walk by. And, and you can tell a royal crown, if you haven't been to a Young Living Convention, we get these lovely lanyards that have the, the rank. The rank just signifies your, your, the size of your company, the size of your Young Living organization. And, the, and so you, you can see who's a royal crown diamond, which is the highest rank in Young Living. So these are millionaires walking by. And they go in a series. They're not together. They're separate. So, and by the way, there's a lot of them, actually, which is always quite hopeful. They go by. And the first is a, a, an Amish family. So there's a little Amish wife and a little Amish husband. And they've got their Amish children. And off they go with their royal crown diamond lanyard. The next dude who walks by is this ginormous black guy with dreads and he's got these gold rings and he smells amazing. And he walks by and then come these like city girls with these nails and these high heels and they walk by and I'm pretty sure I saw, saw a cowboy at some point. But it dawned on me that I don't need to figure this out. This isn't something that I need to get right they're all royal crown diamonds because of who they are because of they just became more of themselves you know um and that was to me that was like a saving grace a saving grace because that was like permission to know that well what i am is someone who lives now potentially on the street with my children I came home from that young living place and that's when the barn showed up. And that's when I started being able to do workshops and opportunities came along and I started representing these oils and just, everything just changed like a quantum leap. So, yeah, sorry, I went off on a tangent. I know I was answering a question, but that story just- That's all right, that was good. And you know what I'm picking up on? Like, it, it's just, I know it is good. So you let, you, we have nothing, we don't have a, the trailer that we were expecting to have camp or whatever and i we were had nothing and then i came home and that's when the barn showed up and I, the derelict barn that had like no walls and that was your gift yes that's a mindset that most people don't have i have to say that again that we when they here is an, a golden opportunity that fell in our hands that we have this barn to live in that really um, strikes home as to what your situation was, but yeah. also validates what I see in you is that always living in that moment and knowing that there's hope and possibilities to see that barn as 
what a blessing. Yeah, yes, that's right. That's right. It's just uh, like, it, this is like full circle back to what you mentioned at the very beginning of our talk. And it's, and I want to affirm it again, because this is very dear to my heart, but there, there is a way of life, there's a way of being where you can truly experience life from within a place of sovereign poise, or the word that you use, Debbie, the place of empowerment, where you have like a framework for understanding the world and for understanding what is opportunity, what is possibility, um, and, and something that is so embodied in you that you don't, it's not about the affirmations, it's not about your positive thinking post-it notes, it's about who you are being. Yes. And, you know, with a, with a, a good framework, for thinking right, feeling good, knowing truth, being love and expressing love and radiating love with a good framework and a good lifestyle that can uphold that and maintain that. That's when we're in our genius zone. That's when we're in our awesome. And that's, that's what life is all about. And, you know, I think that um, I want everyone to know that it's possible for them. I want everyone to know that it's not out of reach. You know, if you, if you can live in a derelict barn and have no income and no money and nothing like that, and you can still purchase essential oils from a billion dollar company, it, you know, that's how easy it is. That's how, do you know how I, how I covered my Young Living oils? With my Young Living check. That's how I did it. That's how easy it was. I did, I did a, um, so like, I know I'm chattering on, I'm sorry. Um, it's a week or two into living in the barn, um, I asked a local church if I could do a workshop on how to pray effectively. And they said, that would be lovely, please. So I set up a series of four workshops called How to Pray. And I taught people a framework for arranging their thoughts and their feeling so that they're really in a space of clarity and strength. And I showed them which essential oils and Young Living products I use to help me hold that kind of poise that I can speak to God. The result of me being able to speak to God so effectively is this incredible way of life. And so I taught them this over four weeks and they all purchased a Young Living starter kit because they knew that it was possible for them to begin to craft the way that they think and the way that they feel and the way that they relate to the world, you know? And like that, my essential oil order was covered. That was how easy it was for me. And, you know, it's easy for, it's easy for anyone who has a life and a story and the willingness, you know? Yeah. Come share your story, share your passion. Yeah. Bring your bring who you are into what it is that you're doing. And it doesn't have to be, you know, doing young living, anything that you're doing when you're bringing this into this. So when I do like essential oils, these are one of the core essence of the, these plants, the mosh kikiwan is the Ojibwe word for medicinal plants. That's where we get these oils. This is the essence of it. And it's still alive and you're, Mm. breathing that in and it's real aligning with your essence and you're connecting oh I just got goosebumps and you're connecting with the energy of all that is which is the sacredness and purpose and contribution and you know I just did a blog about be like a tree because this tree which is it's not going anywhere it's not doing <laughs> anything it is just being I mean and in its strength, you can feel, you can get centered and grounded and re, you know, realigned with your purpose from that essence of that tree and, or peppermint or whatever oil. It's just vibrate on. Yeah. Gone. Yes. I sat with a client yesterday and she has been through all kinds of trauma. And um, there's a lot of hurt on her heart. And she's a wonderful woman. She's great awareness, acute thinker, really brilliant, powerful, knows what she wants and is doing what she can to get there. 
but she's got this bruising on her heart still. We do, we do what we do, right? I'm a, I'm a philosopher, so I, so we, I help her figure things out. We figure things out together. I bring her into her genius zone and there we meet and we make some wonderful things, reveal themselves and we get the bigger picture and then she leaves with clarity, right? So of course, essential oils are a big part of that because that's what keeps the mental space open for it. But geranium came to my mind. Geranium kept saying, geranium. I reached into my bag and I had just, you know, grabbed a handful. You know, I, I think every single young living oiler has a story where they just grabbed some oils and put them in the bag. And that day it was the exact one they needed. I think everyone has oh, yes. that intuitive alignment with their oils. Um, but in my bag, there was geranium. Now, geranium has a, a sort of a, a, a resonant frequency and energy field that's very similar to a healthy heart chakra. I know that a lot of people who do oils, they, they intuitively lean into the world of energy and understanding and reading energy. It, just, it kind of goes with the package, really, because like you say, oils are such a visceral vibrational experience. So you just, it just opens up that world for you. But, but so because geranium, um, and there are other oils too, ylang ylang and, and uh, lavender and rose are great examples, jasmine, but that has the same kind of resonant frequency as a strong, vibrant, healthy and balanced heart chakra. And so I, I ask her, would you like to smell it? And she smells it, she falls in love with it. She says, oh my gosh, how do I get this? This is the one, I need this in my life. She doesn't know why she needs it in her life, but it feels so good to her because there is intuitively, this energy field, this kind of strong, happy, healthy, vibrant heart is what she's wanting. It's what her existing heart is, is wanting. And so there's an equilibrium. It's just energy transference. It's not mystical. It's not esoteric. It's like you put, you know, you, you rescue someone from the ice water. You know that the best way that they're going to warm up is from within, is through aerobic heat generation. You know that. But you can help by putting a space heater nearby so that some of the energy transference can help to warm up. And that's what essential oils help me do in my practice, in my business, because, because of that, you know, because there is this lovely, beautiful marriage, this energy exchange that you get to experience very viscerally when you, when you engage with essential oils. So that was just my little story about geranium and, and my lovely client yesterday. That is wonderful. You were just reminding me, we won't be much longer, but um, there was a lady that I met at Young Living and I was watching some of her videos and she did this energy thing. This gentleman, I can't, I don't know the science of it. He's over here. He's got like the, wa the water. That, oh, what's a dousing thing? Yeah, yeah. And she holds up like an oil and they'll go into alignment or she holds up another oil and they'll go out of alignment depending on what she was needing to come into balance. It's not that necessarily the highest frequency oils that you're needing, it's something that you're needing to realign something else, right? That whole energy, which, which I'm like, I don't get it, but it's fascinating. And there was this science demonstrating it, of it, it happening. And yeah. you're going, blowing my mind. Yeah. So it's absolutely wonderful, isn't it? You can get these really cool gadgets now that can take uh, imaging of, of uh, energy movement of the body, the biofield. The biofield is, you know, thought wave, heart wave, um, bioelectric uh, output, magno, electromagnetism, all that kind of like bits of subtle energy, chi and life force all mashed up into this aura that you can actually take, you can actually take thermal imaging of it and you can see it, you can see how these energies are, are moving and you can see how bringing a particular essential oil into the mix alters that biofield. And uh, it, it's cool to see it on the gadget, you know, that's a bit of fun, but it's yeah. not necessary no. because you know it, you know the shift the moment you engage with the oil. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> you can't help yeah. it, yeah. it's immediate. Yeah. So, oh, okay. So we've been, I don't know, 20 minutes or something like that. Half hour. I don't know. I could talk to you for days. I know. I would just like, we need to have our own little retreat and just hang out for a weekend. That would be cool. Yeah. Anywhere. I'd that even do it cool. in a barn. 
wouldn't that be lovely? Oh, may I tell you and anyone who watches this that speaking of retreats on the 30th of April, I am doing a six hour intensive workshop called Genius. And it's about everything we talked about today, about how to find your genius zone, how to settle into your place of sovereign poise and how to use your thoughts for good, for benevolent, solution-oriented engagement with life. And it's gonna be a lovely experience. It's gonna be full of teachings. It's gonna be full of meditations and thought experiments. So it's just, it's like a, it's like a spa day for your mind. So love it. Um, yeah, if I'm allowed to send you the information yep. in case anybody wants to come this along. together and post it, you can put the link down there. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Okay, so wrapping up, I just wanted to say Young Living is more than just oils, as you can tell through this conversation. Um, so hashtag YIYL, and I'm going to end off with another Ojibwe phrase. So this one, well, that's one, Agamashka de Debwe, across the fire speaks the truth, so we can learn from each other. And the other one that I learned from an Ojibwe elder was Nimaji Duomen Mamawe. We're on this journey together. Wow. Two pretty powerful things. So mm. thank you so much. I am again so grateful that we ran into each other that day and that you've become a part of my journey. Um, whenever we reach out and we connect. So thank you yeah. again. Serendipity cause, right? Lucky, lucky chances. You're one of the luckiest things that happened in my life, Debbie. I love being connected with you. I think it's wonderful what you're doing. I support your mission wholeheartedly. You're a real important light bringer in the world. So thank you. Oh, bless your heart. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for saying yes. Okay, take care. Thanks Bye. Again. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.